Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. Well, today, guys, I want to address something that has always uh, bothered me a little bit. See, a lot of people say politics has no effect on real estate. I beg to differ. I think it does. I think it does matter who's in office, okay? Not only does it matter uh, who's in office, because who's in office, they set the rules or they set the laws as far as governing the land, controlling real estate. Um, the only thing is that no matter who's in office, you should know as a real estate investor what to do so that you don't get hit too hard. Now, um, with what happened back in 2020 with uh, the virus and the moratoriums, that hurt a lot of people. A lot of people really weren't prepared for the number of people who lost their lives, number one, lost their jobs, number two, and then not being able to get any sort of income, number three, and then number four, still being forced to pay exorbitant taxes. As a matter of fact, uh, for some investors in some states, the taxes actually went up, even though they were receiving no income at all. You see, some investors don't have a second job, if you will, and they did not know how to pivot to make more money. And many of them, unfortunately, lost their homes. So again, I say, because of that, uh, yes, your exit strategies need to be in place, but you need to be mindful who you put in office. OK, because I do believe that this pandemic could have been avoided or the length of time could have been minimized, if you will, if things were done properly from the get go. So there's a number of elections coming up. Uh, New York City in particular has a few that will begin, I believe, um, they're, they're going to have some in June, and then in November is when the primaries come about. So what I've done is I've gathered a list of the different offices that are running and two extra offices as well, because a lot of times people get them confused. All right, so let's begin. The first person, the first position uh, that many people uh, neglect because they don't go out and vote for them are the governors, okay? The governors are the head of your state. They are the ones that sign and push for bills. They are the chiefs of the National Guard. They grant pardons and commutations to prisons. All right. Next is the mayor. The mayors are the heads of the city. They oversee the main departments like the police, the fire department, housing, education, and transportation. In some states, the mayor can only veto bills or proposed laws that the city council has created. In other states, uh, he's actually allowed to write and propose bills as well. Uh, all of that really depends on the Constitution. Next, you have the public advocate. The public advocate is someone that will assume the role of mayor if anything happens to the mayor. They oversee city agencies they investigate citizen complaints, businesses, and individuals. 
they also introduce bills or co-sponsor bills with the city council. Next in New York City now, we have what is known as the borough president. We have five boroughs here, Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. The bro we have a borough president for each one. These people advise the mayor on a number of issues, including land use, and they also advocate for budget allocation, all right? Then next, you have city council, and a lot of times there's more than one. City council, they vote on proposed laws. They regulate the city budget. They review land use. They monitor just about all of the agencies, including the Department of Education and the police department. Next, you have the district attorney. The district attorney is the prosecuting attorney. Uh, they basically uh, go over criminal trials for different crimes. In some states, district attorneys are the chief counsel for police. And in other states, district attorneys oversee other local prosecutors, okay? Now, district attorneys are often confused with the state attorney general. The state attorney general is the top legal officer of the state. He, he or she is the people's lawyer. They advise and represent legal and state agencies, okay? So a lot of times, I want to break this down to you because a lot of times we blame everything on the president when in fact we need to look at our local elected officials okay because they actually control more a teacher once said this to me and i really believe this is true you know with the united states each state really is its own country we really only come together when it comes to let's say fighting wars or doing trade with other countries and also when it comes to taxation okay that's really the only time we come together and that's pretty much what the president handles but um each state is really its own country because they there are laws as mentioned in other videos that exist in one state regarding real estate that don't exist in other states regarding real estate. One of the reasons why that is also, um, first of all, it does depend on your vote, but the other reason also has to do with the environment. For example, the land in New York is bedrock and it's very acidic. So uh, buildings here, you can build basements in most on most of the land that we have here. But then now Georgia, on the other hand, Georgia is red clay. And uh, Louisiana, parts of Louisiana is swamp. So in some of those buildings, some, you might not be able to have a basement when it comes to those particular states because of the fact that the dirt, the ground is, dif is different. So that's why the laws have to be different. And then you also have uh, different cultures as well. Um, we really aren't as blended as uh, we say we are. Uh, a lot of times we just coexist, if you will. But if you go from state to state, you kind of notice that there's an overall general culture and that overall general culture a lot of times differ uh, from state to state as well, okay? So I am bringing this to your attention because a lot of times when I go to the local elections, I don't see a lot of people voting. A lot of times I walk in and walk right back out. 
this needs to change. And I want you, I want to encourage you to find out who the people are in your state that is running for these different positions. And if you are not happy with what's going on, then, you know, simply protesting and marching, that's not enough. You have to go out and vote. Many of you just vote for the president when you need to vote for your governor, your mayor, your public advocate. Um, if you're in New York City, borough president, you definitely need to vote for your city council, okay? Because those are the people that the city council is normally uh, represent your neighborhood, okay? Then you have your district attorney your and your state attorney. So my question to you is this. For those of you who have voted in the past, I cheer you on. For those of you who haven't voted in the past, I would like to know how is that really working for you, especially knowing what is currently at stake here in America with so much discrimination still going on when it comes to housing. So my friends, that's all I have for you tonight. Hopefully, the information that I've shared will help you make smart financial moves. Feel free to pass this along. Remember, each one, reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.